Hey guys, welcome to the next part of our series. Today we're going to be working on the logos and insignias that we have over here. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start or I want to show you a couple of tricks that you can use to do this shape right here, because this shape, believe it or not, it's actually quite tricky. It's not as simple as it might seem. So let me show you real quick. First of all, I just took a snipping, uh, the snipping tool and moved this from Photoshop here into Maya as an image plane. I'm just going to bring this back so it is not on the on the front field. And let's analyze how this shape works. And the thing is, this is a very, it's a symmetrical piece, which is useful for us, but it's actually a piece that curves out in very weird ways. What, what do I mean by that? If you see it from the top, you can see that these faces right here are actually receiving light, which means that if we were to see this as a profile, let me go into Photoshop. If we see this piece as a profile, we're probably going to see it going Oh, come on for the shop help me out going like this do we see yeah there we go like this huh, for some reason this this file i think is way too heavy so let me show it in maya i'm just gonna grab the grease tool so from a side view this thing would be curved and then doing this kind of thing for the for the little flag right here and from from the top view, we would see something like this, like this area right here goes forward to the in the, in the top view, and then goes down. So it has a, a quite an interesting um, finish. So I'm going to show you how would I, I would approach this piece. I'm going to go into Mesh Tools. I'm going to select Create Polygon, and I'm going to create one big polygon here on the wing of this shape. I'm going to inverse that. So reverse. There we go. And I'm going to do my quad draw to complete this piece going here to the middle, right about there. Because this is where the line uh, kind of follows and then moves downwards to the to the rest of the element. So I'm just going to continue the wing very broadly, as you can see here, like with very, very big shapes all the way to this place. On the top here, very simple. I'm just going to continue these lines as well. So one, two, and then start fanning it out so that we get the nice curvature here. This piece is actually one that we did before. We could copy it, but to be honest, in this particular case, I would rather have it from the same area. Now I'm just going to select all of these metal lines, snap them, and mirror the object. And we have very low poly representation of the silhouette of this thing. Now, what do we know about this thing? Well, we know this thing curves to the middle, right? So, oh. Do we get a, seems like we have an angle or something there. There we go. So this middle line will give us our height. So I'm just going to move it up to get the height of the piece, which should be something like that. And since we want everything to be as symmetrical as possible, we need to move this height as well. And that will give us pretty much like a nice curvature. Finally, I'm going to grab this vertices, the last vertices that we have, which are these guys and these guys. I'm going to move them up as well. We could even grab these guys and this and this and just move them slightly back. Same with this guy and this guy slightly back to get a nicer curvature going. And, and that's good. And then we're going to grab these guys, these four guys, and we're going to push them out to get the other curvature that we have for that particular piece, which is actually quite uh, from the shadow that I see. It should be quite, quite intense. So that's that's good for now. We're going to grab these two guys, push them out. And then these two guys out as well. And then these two guys, I'm actually going to push in a little bit to get like that, the curvature. And you can see here now that we have a very intense looking shape, very cool looking shape, to be honest, uh, with the with the whole thing, right? Now that we have the curvature, now we can actually start doing a little bit of uh, modeling for the for the rest of the elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this thing, give it thickness, not super thick, but thick enough. So something like that. Yeah, something like that works. And let's start modeling. So for instance, we see here that we have like a little bit of a crown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select all of these lines, all of these edge loops, and extrude it a little bit more. Because I know when I do my support loops over there, all of that will be um, tight. Here on the front, be very mindful of, of this curvature. We want to keep it as close as possible. So if the extrude does some weird stuff, 
just fix it manually. There we go. Now, uh, we got a very sharp line that pretty much crosses all throughout the, the element. So I'm gonna grab my offset edge loop. I'm gonna select this right here. And that's gonna give us the sharpness there on the middle, which looks really, really nice. I can see that we don't have that much sharpness here on the, on the top side, on this detail here. So in order to avoid that, I'm gonna go into the front view. I'm gonna select my vertices here. And I'm gonna turn on, let me save real quick. There we go. Because symmetry sometimes likes to crash Maya. I'm gonna go world X. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And this will pretty much relax the whole um, tightness of the of the element up here. So we, we shouldn't have that bad of a pinch in that place. Let's do the insert edge loop really quick on the upper side. So I'm gonna go into insert edge loop. So one there, one there, and one there should be enough to keep that really tight. And of course, one here will help me. Now we need a couple of fetch loops that we can add from now or from the get go here on the on the sides so that this thing keeps its um, what's its name so that it keeps its um, thickness and it doesn't go too smooth. I'm gonna push these guys inwards because I can see a little bit of a dip there. And now I can use again my insert edge loop. Let's turn off symmetry. Let's go into insert edge loop and I can use it to tighten this line right here and make it look like a like a nice division there. If we want to make it even sharper, we, we don't need to because we can sculpt a lot of those details back in ZBrush, which I think it's the, the best uh, course of action for us. But if we wanted to, we could just grab one of these lines and extrude it in just a little bit and that will give us a nicer division. Actually, that's not bad, see, looks cool. Now for this division right here, this is where things get tricky because there's this line, very sharp line that goes across the element and pretty much flows back into the element here. But we don't have that flow right now because we did a couple of weird changes for the silhouette uh, when we were doing the initial shape. So I'm gonna try and correct that from a topology standpoint so that everything flows better and then we're gonna, we're gonna fix it. So how are we gonna do it? Well, we need this line to flow into this line right here. And the only way to make things flow into each other is by changing the topology. So I'm gonna grab my cut tool and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a path. So going from this line right here, from the center line, from here, I'm gonna cross and create an edge loop that pretty much goes around the object. So something like this, like this, and of course it needs to go all the way around and finish in that exact same position. We now of course have angons, but we're gonna fix this real quick. The way to fix this is we're gonna do one more little line here. Let me show you from here to here, and then from here to here, and from here to here, and now we just erase all these middle lines. So now this line flows properly, and this guy, of course, needs somewhere to flow. Where are we, where are we gonna send it? To the corner right here. So this guy will be right there, which of course needs to continue down the line and up to the top here. We need to do the same thing over here. So we need to create one, two, one, two, three. Erase all of these guys to change the flow of the topology. And then with my cut tool, just paste those two. There we go. Same thing with this guy. We're gonna flow it down here, down across across and into this line right here. There we go. So now the topology flows in that way while keeping or trying to keep the topology or the, the surface that we had as, as close as possible. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go here and use or move all of these vertices up here because we don't need them all there on the same place. We can use them to further give the nice curvature to this side of the insignia, right? So again, I changed the flow of the topology for the 
full shape so that this flows right into this middle line. And now what I can do is I can grab my inserted loop and add a couple of lines there. And that will give us a very sharp looking curvature while keeping the same organic flowiness to the whole thing. We of course are gonna mirror this piece and look at that. The only issue might be this little thing right there, like that very harsh pinch that we get. We can try and soften it out by moving these things along. Unfortunately, other than that, it's not really possible to, to fix the topology there. In ZBrush, we could do a couple of changes. Uh, I guess one thing we could do is we could collapse a couple of edges, like especially, yeah, I, I guess we could collapse this. So I'm gonna select this guy and this guy, and I'm gonna select here on Edit Mesh, Collapse. That's gonna pretty much make one single very, very um, important point there. And now the pinch gets slightly reduced. I'm gonna merge these guys to center. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, that definitely helps. It's not as visible now. And we still get that nice sharp looking um, thing going around. Although I think I messed up the topology there. So let me see if we can, what else could we do? Let's see, if we get rid of this guys. Actually, that looks way nicer. I think it's that what, that's what the artist intended. The one thing I do see though, is there's a very sharp peak here. So I'm gonna move all of these vertices, the front vertices down. So we get that nice looking uh, indentation there. And we probably do need a couple of, like an offset edge loop on this middle polygons so that we get that sharp looking, yeah. See, that's really, really nice. Now, of course, we might have a couple of angons. That's fine, remember our little uh, secret. We can just um, smooth this out and it will solve all the angon issues. But before we do that, I wanna insert a couple of edge loops, extra edge loops, one right there to keep that sharp line there, and one right here to keep the sharp line going. See, that's the, that's the angon hitting right there. Uh, where else can we insert it? Right here. So in this corner there and this corner there, there we go. So that keeps the whole shape of the thing. Of course, we need all those details and those nice lines uh, going around, but pretty much the shape of the insignia is right where we want to. And uh, I'm just gonna go into mesh smooth so that this is permanent and we get rid of any angles and any issues that we might have. Those little things that we have there, we can also hammer those down in, in ZBrush once we are back in the in the sculpting software. Delay history, first transformation, center pivot, and let's move this to the place. So where should this be? Is right on top of the right uh, pectoral muscle. You can see it touches the little border on the shirt right here. So I'm gonna use that as an indication of where this should be. And it touches the belt, so this is a little bit too big, it seems to me. Uh, slightly bigger. like his Medal of Honor or something. There we go. So that's that's the position of the object. Now, I'm gonna undo that because since this thing is very symmetrical, I actually wanna keep it pretty similar to what we have here on the backs. Even though I know it goes over there, it's gonna be way easier to sculpt if we have everything symmetrical. So if we position it, it's gonna get really, really tricky to sculpt things out. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna stop the video right here. In the next video, we're gonna finish this little piece with the buckle here and probably start working on the leather, um, shoulder pad that we have on the on the right on the left side here and after that we're gonna be pretty much done with all the things here on the top of our character we should be able to move really fast with the accessories here on the legs and then start with one of the coolest coolest features of this guy which is the gloves right here after that's done we're gonna move on to the boots and keep on working as you can see this is not a, or I don't consider this to be a very complicated workflow. Most of the modeling tools and modeling tricks that we're using are pretty much uh, the same. However, since there are a lot of pieces for the character, that makes it a little bit, um, of, or not a little bit, quite a bit of hard, hard work. So just be patient, keep pushing, try to utilize the same things or 
some of the things as many times as possible. And uh, yeah, the, don't don't get frustrated. Just keep on working. Take it one step at a time and you'll be able to finish in no time. So anyway, guys, hope you have a happy modeling and I'll be back in the next video.